Hello, everyone, and welcome to War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. Come to you, as always, from deep within the outer rim, far beyond the watchful eyes of the Galactic Empire. Joining me today, as always, is my co-host, Garrett K. Jones. And Garrett, today is a very, very special day. It is our seven-year anniversary special. And joining us to celebrate, you know him. You tolerate him. <laughs> it is the one, the only former co-host uh, here at War of the Stars and the host of Star Wars Canon Podcast and a bunch of other things, Mr. Yeah. Brian Miller. The the only person that actually tolerates me is my wife, but I appreciate the sentiment. I, I really do. It's yes, good to be here, yes. man. I haven't, I haven't yeah, talked no, in quite a while and glad to talk some Star I know, Wars, right? baby. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yes. Something new. Um, yeah. I, what's that? I said something new and different for him. I know. <laughs> I've never done this before. <laughs> it's like he's never talked Star Wars. I know. Never. Right? What is, what is Star he Wars? Was. What are you talking out. about? I've never seen it. Is that the one with the Enterprise? <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. No, it's the one with the TARDIS. Oh, gotcha. Okay. The TARDIS and Gandalf gets in the hey, TARDIS hey, and hey. has to say you the don't Firefly. use that word. Only they use that word. Is that the one where they go to Hogwarts? Okay. Yeah, 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 you, you gotcha. have to. Yeah, Camp Half Blood, I think. <laughs> oh boy. Oh well. There's a special place in hell for people like me. Uh, <laughs> of course, we are uh, in the middle of our <laughs> review of the final season of Bad Batch. If you're not aware, Brian. Sweet. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to be doing tonight. We're going to be talking cool. Bad Batch and just whatever else. Uh, tickles our fancy, sweet in Star Wars. So, um, uh, mm-hmm. Garrett, why don't you start us off with kind of a recap of where we're at? Well, first of all, let's uh, let's ask Brian here real quick what have you okay. thought about this season so far? Uh, I really enjoyed this season a lot. Um, first off, Bad Batch as a show by itself, I remember. When the Bad Batch was introduced in that final season of Clone Wars they did, I know that some people mm-hmm. who weren't a huge fan of that arc and whatnot, my wife and I love that arc. We loved I the Bad it, Batch. Yeah. It was so much fun. Um, I loved the characters. They felt, even though they're clones, that, you know, they've done a really good job of making each one feel like an individual personality mm-hmm. and, and everything. And so it, I we fell in love with them. And then when they announced they were doing the show, it was, oh, yes, they're doing a Bad Batch show. That's going to be so awesome. It's going to be that freaking A-team. And, you know, and yeah. so it's so cool. And so uh, this last season has felt really fun. Um, Crosshair is obviously one of my absolute favorite characters in the show from beginning to end. Um, mm-hmm. I will say this though, like it, I didn't realize it until Thursday night after I had watched this last episode, I didn't realize we only had one episode left. Yeah. And so I was like, part of me had this thought of, well, it doesn't really feel like they're really building because it felt like it was the middle of the season still to me. And so I was like, it doesn't feel like that last episode yeah. ended on like a to be concluded, you know, kind of moment. But I could be wrong. I, I can't wait to see what we get, to, you know, tomorrow for, for bad. Batch, well, so. I'm, I'm just wondering, like. How long is this last episode going to be? Right. Because uh, we were talking about it last night uh, on uh other show I'm, I was on. And one the, of well, the producers was like, this better not just be a 25-minute episode. Like, episode, the first episode of the series was like over an hour long. Mm-hmm. This needs to be an hour long episode. Yeah, like an extra. I would say at least 45 minutes. Long, you know. Just because, like you said, they need to wrap things wrap things up. Um, yeah, I will say the 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 la- not this last episode, but especially the uh, the episode Juggernaut. We kind of felt like that kind of felt like an episode, like me and Garrett, that it could have been added to another episode. Like it felt of all yeah. the episodes that felt more like a filler episode, just kind of like this could have been with you know you could have added this in another episode together to get one episode and well the last the last four episodes well not counting episode 14 because flash strike seemed pretty interesting because that's where the, there was a lot of action that took place in it yeah but um point of no return juggernaut and into the breach and to an extent well, not so much identity crisis 
but like point of no return. No, I take that back. Point of no return doesn't feel like a filler episode, but juggernaut and into the breach definitely did. Yeah. Definitely did. Oh, well, that, I think uh, the one with Fennec Shan, bad territory. That one really did. I really feel like, yeah. That one Cause did. I mean, she, yeah. unless she's going to like, to me, that was what, like, why, why bring in that character? If you're old, if you're not going to use her again, right? You know why? Why do that? You know if you're just going to be unless it's just like, hey, look, remember Phoenix Shan? Well, and she the same here? thing for Asajj Ventress. We only saw her in that one episode, Harbinger. Right. Yeah, and yeah, even yeah. then, she's she's like the title of Harbinger is even kind of a misnomer because Harbinger usually indicates that there's some kind of warning of destruction or death or something like that. And she doesn't even do that. Well, she let yeah. him know if I could find you, the empire is coming. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's yeah, that's true. But like, like I was saying, you know, if you're going to bring in these these characters like Finnick Shan like that, and only use them once and not do a thing where, like, I was expecting like a team up, like yeah. when when Omega gets captured, they go and they find, you know you know, hey, this let's find this person. Let's go get this person. Let you know, and then they all go in and but but so far the only person they got was Echo. Mm -hmm. Which uh can we just talk really quickly that with Echo to, in this episode? I thought he was hilarious hilarious with the getting the hand. Yeah. I, I love Echo. He and, and yeah it's like that that whole thing with Echo just got more and more ridiculous, and, and I loved it. I was there for every every I I loved every yes. second of it. When he puts the the stormtrooper armor on, my first thought was, well, "Where are his implants at?" Like you know, he because his other helmet has got the cut out for his implants. Like, and so I was like, "Where are his implants?" And you find out later he took them off. But you like, I'm like, he's a stormtrooper walking around with a scomp link for a hand. Nobody's gonna notice that. Like nobody's gonna notice the scomp link. That's just like, and then he and then, as soon as he takes the droid out and looks down, he's like. Hmm. And I'm like, no, he's not gonna oh. do it. Sure enough, <laughs> I'm just like, Jesus. Christ, and they, and they, they, thanks for the hand. Yeah, line. <laughs> that was. It. I mean, yeah, that's definitely an early yeah. Clone Wars joke. Yeah, yeah. So I, I do want to say. Also, let's get right. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say the last couple of episodes, Echo has kind of been like the, like the the secret MVP of the team because. He's been able to do a lot of things behind the scenes and just make sure that they're not failing. Yeah. He's taken over Tech's job. He hit. He, yeah, he really has. He's done the, which is the reason why I think it like in season two, why it was kind of a smart idea of the show to kind of separate the two, because you have two people that are basically identical and can do the same exact things and. Of course, we saw what happened with Tech. <laughs> Rest in peace, Tech. Unless, um, of course, Tech is the uh, the operative. I hope no not. Chance. No chance. I hope not. Yeah. No. We chance. have. I have my. I have my theory of yeah. who I think I, it I'm is. I'm still holding to my theory that it's it's really uh it's really a crosshair, and the crosshair we've been dealing with is a clone. Clone of a clone, I, and that's why he's shaky, a, and he's a, like a, another clone, like a clone of. A clone of a clone, yeah, a copy he's of a not copy, fully a clone of a, a copy of a copy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's tech though, because he's way too good of a sniper to be able to. It's for it to yeah. be tech, and and, and, like, and the voice. If you listen to the voice, it sounds it sounds like crosshair. Like, it sounds like crosshair. It does. It, does. it really does. And but, I, we said, I said this last even last season. I said I I told them you know they we need cross or not crosshair, but tech needs to say dead because. Yeah. Otherwise, it cheapens his his sacrifice. You bring them yep. back, and that just ruins. Yep. I completely the death. agree with you. Just like it, yeah. just like it cheapened the victory, you know, at the end of Return of the Jedi when somehow Palpatine returned. God, I said, don't get me started, man. This is going to turn into something bad. If you get me started on Rise of Skywalker, don't do it. You don't want to go down that rabbit hole. No, I. I, do it. I, I do it. Let the hate flow through you. I um, I'm <laughs> good. Um, no, I I don't think they're even gonna touch on who the operative is. Honestly, I you know remember when Ahsoka came out and everybody was like, "Well, who's Merrick? We're gonna find out who Merrick was." And then he was just a ball of gas. <laughs> you yeah, remember that, that? What the heck was that? Yeah. And so I don't think 
yeah. I don't think we're going to even find out who the operative is. We have way too much other stuff to be wrapping up. Like the Zillow Beast yeah. is coming back into it. You know, so like our clone of the Zillow yeah. Beast is coming. So like they've got way too much more to wrap up instead of this this operative. I think. Yeah. That's yeah. just me, though. I, yeah. I think I, you're right. But at the same time, who knows? We'll, we'll see what they do. We've got mm-hmm. this next episode coming up. But Flash Strike, let's talk about that. So the, the synopsis for the episode was as soon as the Bad Batch disengaged from the main Imperial shuttle, Hemlock scrambles a team of fighters and begins firing the base's cannons. Their ship is eventually shot down, but not before everyone escapes via repelling cables and Rampart unleashes a hilarious sounding scream. <laughs> yes. Honestly, I, I, think, I think this episode should have been the one called Into the Breach. And like mm-hmm. Juggernaut and Into the Breach should have been like fused into one episode and just called Into the Breach. Or it should have just been called, you know, Infiltration. Mm. Or, well, we already had an episode called Infiltration. I don't know. Something better than <laughs> Juggernaut and Into the Breach because none of it made sense. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I uh, I, I, I love, you know, the, the line from uh, Hunter when they all land and they're like, did, did, uh, did Rampart make it? Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> did Rampart? Unfortunately. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> like i like how I, I like how ramparts become the butt of so many he jokes. has like what what was said when he was in the background and he's not even on camera and you hear he's like you know i can hear you right <laughs> like, like yeah we know show him on camera he's like yeah, yeah. we know like <laughs> it's just that, like even the cameraman in the show isn't even showing rampart he's just like shut up well, <laughs> the, the funny the funny part is is like for the most part the only characters the only character on the bad batch in the team that had any kind of sense of humor has been has been wrecker yeah you know, tech and and crosshair i mean crosshair is really dry and 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 cynical to begin with yeah so you kind of get a sense of his his type of humor but hunter and 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 tech never crack jokes now they're starting to crack jokes they're starting yeah. to lighten up and a part of me like the writer in me is saying this is really good character development because like they're facing the gallows this is it like we don't have any other encounter with the bad batch in any other media that takes place after like chronologically after these events this could be it for them yeah Yeah. and so that that would be interesting that that maybe all their humor is coming out as gallows humor Mm yeah yeah that makes sense that that's a real thing too like i mean you remember, because uh, we were talking before we started recording, the last time you and I, Garrett, saw each other on here was when we you guys did the Veterans show. Um, right. Veterans oh, yeah. and Star right. Wars. Yeah. And, and that gallo humor, that is real. Like, if you're going outside the wire and you don't think you're coming back, that sense of humor is the only thing you got taking you out on, on a lot of times. And so you're cracking dark jokes, you know, and you're just, hey, it is what it is. Let's do this, you know, and that's a real thing. So I, I like the fact that you brought that up and that you compared it to that because that's that really is a real life thing that 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 I think translates really well to a show like this. Yeah. Yeah, well I mean especially especially when I mean we're dealing with a group of characters who are veteran soldiers. Yeah. I, and I think that mm-hmm. offers especially viewers like yourself who are veterans it gives them an opportunity to connect with characters that they otherwise wouldn't connect with. Yeah. There's that, there's that camaraderie. There's that companionship that happens on the battlefield and uh, nowhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, I also liked, like more and more this season, the, the we, we saw it beginning last, last season too, but the, the humanization of crosshair crosshair just becoming like you like he's becoming the like the star of this yeah of the show like this season has really it's been oh like last season was Omega and tech and mm-hmm. their relationship this one has been Omega and crosshair yeah and, and you really see that come where it was you know where he tells he he mentions to I think it was wrecker you know, she, you know, she believed in me. She saved me and I, I owe her. Yeah. 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 Which is why I definitely like, I don't know about you guys. Um, 
I'm I'm like sold. Crosshair's not making it out of this. Uh, oh, yeah. it, I mean, if any of them survive, it's not going to be Crosshair. It's it's not. I think he's going to be the if anybody is head is on the chopping block for this season or for this series, it's him. It, it almost has to be considering he's had that continuous thread through the whole series. Um, mm-hmm. I think that just is the natural progression of his story of where he's going to have to end up getting to. I, it just it just seems. Like I, that's the direction they're going. This is from a different show, but I saw a shirt. Uh, it was it's from uh, Screen Crush. They have it's the uh, it's the shirt. It's got Ahsoka on it. It's got the um, the scene where she's looking at all the helmets of the after the end of the last season of Clone Wars, and with the line "Good soldiers follow orders." I'm like, oh, I want that. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. Good soldiers follow orders. Good soldiers oh, like follow orders. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, what about we, were talking we, talked, we talked a little bit about? Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I was going to bring up something completely. Oh, I was going to say, um, where do we think they're going? Because Rampart is captured near the end of this. Where do you think we're going? They're going with that. Do you think that he's going to betray them, or do you think that we're going to see a, um. Closer to what we saw in Rebels with, uh, I cannot think of his name now, um, the Imperial that turned coat. Oh, Callus, Agent Callus. Callus. Do you think we're going to see that? Where, because he's he's been around them and he sees that he sees that, or do you think that he's an Imperial through and through? I, for me, I like I I think I mentioned this the last in the last episode. I think one of the things. It, that would be possible would be Hemlock using Rampart as kind of a Trojan horse. And, and here's why, like Hemlock is a guy that hedges his bets. He wants to be in control of things so much that he is in the midst of every little decision. He is micromanaging yeah. everything at ad-, ad nauseum. And so when I, when I see a character like that, the, my first thing is, is he's going to have contingencies for his contingencies yeah, as best as he can. Cause he doesn't want to be the guy that makes the mistake and gets the emperor ticked off with him. He likes being in that position of power. He likes feeling like the smartest guy in the room. And mm-hmm. I mean, you see that little bit of triumph when he got rampart thrown in prison in the first place. So yeah. my thought on this is that, I think that the version of Crosshair that we're seeing in this season is also a Trojan horse. Hence my, my thought that the operative is the real Crosshair who's just been brainwashed. But in order to hedge his bets, to make sure that he could not only get Omega, but also eradicate the entire Bad Batch, he gave them the idea of getting rampart or he implanted Mm. the idea in crosshair's brain to eventually go find rampart get him out of prison and help and you know go through the process of finding uh tantus yeah i mean it's convoluted but it seems like something that hemlock would do to really lock in his his targets yeah I could, the only way I could see any type of redemption at all for Rampart is a, is a situation where, like, when they're escaping, that Omega saves his life or does something and makes makes the scene of, like, everyone deserves a second chance, you know, no matter what. And that kind of gets the ball rolling of, like, you know. Yeah. And, you know. Uh, but again, I don't think we will. I think he is the, the main. You know, I, not the main bad guy, obviously. But I think he's. You think he's, he's slime he's in it for himself? I do. Yeah. Not quite I as agree. much slime as as uh, Hemlock. Yeah. Which talk about yeah, talk Hemlock. about on the nose naming. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm kind of curious. I, I'm like, really, Hemlock? That doesn't that. 
we've had all these crazy wild names in the past, and the the best we can come up with is Doctor Hemlock. I mean, is he a James Bond villain? Come on, sounds like one. Kind of. Pretty- Although I, I still gotta give props. Much. I mean, have you seen him? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I've still gotta give props to Jimmy Simpson for his his portrayal. Like he is nailing the character. Like he is cold. He is oh. calculating. Yeah, he is yeah. sinister in all the ways. And like, and, and it's interesting. You you look at some of Jimmy Simpson's other work. You know, from from movies like Loser from like the early two thousands, where he's just playing. You know, some some bored college guy just looking to, you know, roofy girls to, um, to being the quirky, yeah. uh, 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 serial killer expert in psych. Um, you know, he, he plays some very interesting characters and like, I mean, if, if you've seen the first season of, of Westworld on HBO, Oh my gosh, some of his best work right there. And he's not even just, he, and he's doing a full performance. He's not doing uh, voice work like he's doing in this one. So yeah, Jimmy Simpson has been absolutely nailing the part of, of Hemlock, despite the, the goofy James Bondian villain name. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's going to eat it though in this season. He has to, he's got to um, eat it. In this next so. episode. What, what, like, what did you think of in that episode? What? What? Oh, sorry. I you're every once in a while you're cutting you're cutting out and yeah, kind of having a little technical difficulty. So we end up talking over each other, but it's fine. Um, what did you think of? This is a few episodes back, so we're kind of catching up with where we've been. Uh, when they did the big reveal of the kids in the uh uh in the in, vault. In the, in the vault. I, I liked that episode. Was that the one with Cad Bane when he went and got the other kids? Yes. I yeah. loved that episode. That was I, so good. I, I've i got a special spot in my heart for Cad Bane anyway. Um, I, I've always thought Boba Fett was very overrated. Cad Bane is where it's at. I love Cad Bane. Um, and so when he popped up in this, like I, I knew he was going to. He was in the trailer. And so I was just like, I want some Cad Bane, man. Bring it on. And and seeing him go and you know especially when they t- started talking about how certain bounty hunters the high level bounty hunters were going after the midichlorian count targets mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. i was like cad bane's got to be one of them he has to be you know yeah. and so i well, uh I, I love that whole episode and i think he was the old like we talked about this too he was the only bounty hunter of the bounty hunters that they that they could have brought in to do that yeah like of the of the can't main cannon you know, I don't. You couldn't have brought, brought him Boba Fett. No. I don't think he would have done. You know, Finnick Shan wouldn't have done it. You know, it had Cad Bane was the only one that made yeah. sense. Cad Bane. And uh, well, at this point, at this point, yeah. Boba Fett would still be because I mean we're still early yeah. on into the yeah. the existence of the Empire. He'd still be a kid, at least yeah. a teenager. Yeah. 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 Would, um, he be the, would he be the same age as Omega? Were they created at the exact no, same time, no. or was she created later? Because she I don't know. she was. I think she was created later because like she doesn't have the same she doesn't obviously doesn't have the same accelerated growth that the other phones right. had. Right. That's for sure. But like I mean and she's got the two the X chromosomes, that, yeah. Considering the fact that she had um that you know, we see Boba Fett as like a, a, a at least an eight to ten year old kid in episode two attack of the clones right mm-hmm. and the clone wars last for about 10 years so he would have been 18 maybe 20 pushing mm-hmm. it Clo- clone wars were only like two or three years are you sure mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah no the you're the the the, the oh, you know what? you're right you're right so okay then at, at the oldest he would have been um he would have been like 13 or 14 13, yeah and yeah. and aura singh was the one that was training him at that point Right, so, yeah. and, um, and he would have been running with her and Bosk, and I think Dengar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that sounds right. Because we so. see that happening in the Clone Wars series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. What, oh, what do you think of no. oh, Omega as a, a character, Brian? I love Omega. I, I, I do it's, too. It's different, and, and like for 
and um, one of the things I saw online was, you know, when she first came out, how can there be a female clone? Well, she's first off genetically engineered. She is a genetically yeah. engineered being. And it wouldn't be that hard. You already, I mean, instead of the XY, just make it XX and you get a female. Like, it's not yeah. that hard. She's not the only one. You know, there's, I mean, Emery is a clone, you know, uh, uh, and she's obviously female. Um, and like the Brotherhood novel with Anakin and Obi-Wan on Kata Nemoidia, there's a female mm -hmm. clone in there, you know. And so, uh, and there was even a mention of her in Queen's Hope, I believe, because I think it was like the immediate book after Brotherhood. Um, or maybe it was the other way around. Anyway, um, but there, I mean, there's there's female clones. It's, I, I, I don't yeah. have an issue with it, but I love Omega. Yeah. And... And I love the fact that, like, I've seen when she first came out, it was like, oh, it's another Mary Sue. It's another Mary. Yeah. Like, everything that they've done has made sense. Like, right. Like, as she's far as her training, training, she's got yeah, training. Like, she has already with, with just, you know, being the clone, you know, being a clone, she has, you know, especially if she is a bad batcher, yeah. that meant she would have had certain genetic things put in her to make her better and like today's episode is a perfect example of that's something that only she could have done none of the other bad batch could have been able to crawl through those uh Tiny, which gave me uh, yeah yeah shoot that, that that definitely gave me uh the, the uh the greatest christmas movie of all time die hard vibes <laughs> oh god don't get me started on <laughs> die hard as a christmas movie you guys are like poking the bear tonight. Rise of Skywalker, Die Hard Christmas movie. You guys are just trying, man. You're trying. But you're right. It did okay. have that kind of okay. vibe to it. Die Hard 2 as oh, a Christmas movie. Oh, here we movie. go. Oh, my God. No. 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 Just because it happens at Christmas doesn't mean it's a Christmas movie. Ghostbusters 2 happens between Christmas and New Year's does not make it a Christmas New Year's movie. It just makes it a Ghostbusters movie. There's... A, I've got to stop. Little column A, little column B. I have to stop. I got to stop. <laughs> I got to stop. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh. Anyway. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was that, that. I love that scene of her going through there. And then, yeah. the, you know, just bring, like, you knew, like, is she going to make it back? Is she going to make it back? Is I, I felt like I I don't know I felt like that scene could have used with a little bit more tension, mm. um, but to be fair, as I was watching it, I was getting ready for work, and so there may have been something I may have missed. So, yeah, there is that. I like how she like hacked yeah. the wall with a pencil too. I love that. I, yeah. I, I, she's just like, well, she wasn't like really hacking it. What she was doing right. is she, she was prying that she, panel she, off. Yeah, and I, I'm like yeah. that pretty that's pretty clever for yeah. for a kid to do that but i mean She's again yeah. It. Yeah. yeah yeah no you're you're right i i love her as a character i think she's awesome and what's cool is you remember when ahsoka came out like originally when we were first introduced to ahsoka everybody was like she is the worst thing to ever happen to star wars remember that and then everybody grew with her yes and and learned to love her now yeah. she's one of the favorite characters of all time i feel like they, they. I feel like Dave Filoni did that on purpose with Ahsoka. I feel like that was because he flat told Ashley Eckstein, "Nobody's gonna like you. Nobody's gonna like your character at the start. Just trust the process. Keep going with it. Don't give up." And and look where it got her right. And right. so I think with Omega, I think they hit the ground running with her right off the rip, and and was like, and and tried their best to make this a character that you're going to end up caring about by the end of the first season of the show. And I think I think they mm -hmm. pulled it off pretty well. Well, and if, if I, I think one of the things that helps is that the first season you see Omega the same way as the Bad Batch do as like this unnecessary tag along. She's she's just going to be a hindrance. Yeah. She's there's nothing good that's going to come from this because she's a kid. But as the ser as the series has progressed, each of the characters got closer and closer to her. I mean, obviously, Wrecker was the one who was like who gravitated to her first yeah. because. Yeah. You know that's his nature. He's he's the, he's the big lovable puppy. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but the the I like going back talking. You know, with, like what you were saying with uh, with Ahsoka when she was initially introduced in what was it two thousand eight? Yeah. Like 
I didn't necessarily have a problem with Ahsoka as a character. I thought, I thought she was obnoxious because she's a Padawan. She's a teenager. She thinks she knows everything. And I'm like, this is going to be a good foil for Anakin, who is the same freaking way. Freaking way, yeah. Because, I mean, think about how Anakin was written in Attack of the Clones. Nobody liked him. Yeah. The character mm-hmm. was wooden. The character was obnoxious. And I'm like, really? This is the guy that Padme is falling in love with? <laughs> but then you look at how the character How did he score written. Natalie Portman? What the heck? <laughs> right? Is that um, all it takes? But- I could have done that. Just complain about sand. <laughs> Just complain about everything. Kill a bunch of people and their kids. Like, yeah, no, it'd be easy. That's all it took. I'm I'm having a, a flash of various memes popping up on in my brain right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> red flags. Get your red flag. Have you guys seen that? The yeah. it's the Lego episode one when Qui Gon is getting ready to tell Anakin you could be a Jedi, and in the background. <laughs> Watto's like, red flags, get your red flags. And every time Qui-Gon says something, he's like, you're going to be a great Jedi. And he's like, giant red flags. <laughs> I love it. But, but like, That's all I can think of now. Yeah. But like, I mean, even Anakin had that, had that progression through the Clone Wars, whether it's through the books, through the, the TV show, um, where you see him be a more competent character. So that by the time we, we, Rewatch, you know, Revenge of the Sith. You see where all those cracks are coming from. You see where all those faults are, but you also see the competency in the way he handles things, and the things that have been pushing him closer and closer to the dark side. Mm-hmm. Ahsoka, like she starts off in that same vein of being this very wooden, very obnoxious character, but the audience grows with her, and I think Omega falls in that same vein just in a shorter amount of time yeah. although you know in in 15 years i don't think everyone's going to be clamoring for a, an omega um so, you know Probably series <laughs> um not. because she's a character that works well in in uh in concert with other characters not standalone yeah but uh yeah yeah i don't i don't know if i'd want to see a a uh, an entire entire show with just Omega. I think Omega works with the Bad Batch. Yeah, like yeah, like I love that scene where they're when they're in the vault and they're hearing the the bomb, the bombardment. Yeah, the the, mm-hmm. the, bo- the from the from the laser cannons. My brothers are coming, and yeah. she makes the line <laughs> yeah. as like my brothers found. Yeah, my like, oh that's what it was. Coming. They found I'm me. Like, yeah, oh. yeah, my brothers. <laughs> Yeah. Brothers. Which yeah. is funny. Was, my, was, uh, my daughter my daughter found out the other day uh that Omega is from uh the, the girl the woman who does the voice of Omega is from New Zealand. Yeah. And my sister in law lives in New Zealand. And she first thing she said is, oh, I wonder if she knows KK. I was like, probably not. That's highly <laughs> New Zealand's a much bigger country than you give it credit for. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That would be like that's, someone that's right up there with, someone, uh, Cal- someone lives in California and being like, hey, maybe Garrett knows them. <laughs> hey, why are you, you there? You know, I, I've been asked that question. Uh, my, uh, I lived in Japan for a year as an exchange student, and uh, someone asked me where I was from. I told them I was from California, and they're like, oh, do you know the Backstreet Boys? And, you know, I, yeah. you know, in yeah. English... I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I, know the, I know who the Backstreet Boys are. That's how we take it, is we take it to know we we're familiar with there's a uh she asked it as if i knew them personally i'm like i have personally. i've never met them i've never yeah. seen them in concert i, I get the same Both thing the here. Someone, will will be, someone will ask me something about you know tell them i'm from illinois and they're like oh is that near chicago <laughs> yeah it's pretty close to relatively chicago. speaking yes <laughs> pretty no, close near yeah it's in the orbit yes just, relatively you know, speaking there. yes yeah it's, it's throw a rock yeah. You might, you might. Or they'll ask it. me it's... if I know someone from Chicago. I'm like, first of all, I don't live in Chicago. Second, <laughs> Chicago is a big city. Yeah, yeah. really big. Oh my god. <laughs> now, anyway, what's really, what's really funny is when I tell people where I'm from in California, and they're like, like when I was in college, I was in Monterey Bay, and I'd tell people I'm from Hanford, and Hanford's this small cattle town from uh, you know 40 minutes south of Fresno. And I would tell people in college, and they're like, you're from Connecticut? 
God, the out-of-state tuition must be killing you. I'm like, <laughs> three hours away. <laughs> That's great. Oh, I'm man. out in the middle of nowhere, so nobody makes any jokes about me. They just make jokes about tornadoes and Oz. So, yeah. Do you oh, have well, a dog named Toto? No, uh, but my wife did have a cat that she she has a tattoo on her leg of Dorothy with a cop looking in her basket and Toto sitting next to her. It's an awesome tattoo, but she, yeah, she's really big. She had a cat that she was basically her Toto. Yeah. Um, Do you have a droid named Toto? I not yet. <laughs> I'm because I I'm gonna buy the Cad Bane hot toy that comes with Toto, nice. and so I don't have him yet, but I will oh. soon. Nice. I will. I love Toto. I at least want to see a, a, like a self generated meme where you where you take the statue to some other state. You say Toto, we're not in Kansas not anymore. In Kansas, I can take him down to Oklahoma. It's like two miles that way, so I could totally do that. I could throw a <laughs> rock and hit. I can hit Oklahoma. So nice. We'll do it. <laughs> No. You are now leaving Kansas. Toto, we're not in Kansas anymore. We're I'm going to do it. Anymore. Now that you said that, I'm going to do it. Please, please, and yeah. tag me on that. <laughs> totally. Well, we we got to cut off topic here. It's okay. It's yeah. good. We're still talking Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're Star Wars adjacent. I guess, yeah. yeah. We're, we're close enough to the um, orbit that the Death Star target. Well, where where are we? Up. So, yeah. You know, so, um, we've been talking about Bad Batch for a while, but it's also important to note that, as John mentioned at the beginning of the episode, this is our seventh anniversary. We've been doing the show. Well, I've been doing the show for less than two years, but John's been on the show for seven. Yes. And yes, so, seven, seven years, uh, way, yeah. way back when. A uh, little history lesson for those who don't know how, how this show got started. Uh, I was in a Facebook group. Um, um, I believe it was, I don't know if you guys remember Collider. I remember Collider, yeah. The uh, I remember Yeah, Collider. and they're start, well, they're Star Wars pages, and they're asking the question, you know, about who your favorite Star Wars podcaster or YouTuber is. And I remember the time I, I was really big on theory, Star Wars theory. Uh, he had just started to, I think he just got his first thousand subscribers. Like, so this was early before he became too big for his britches. Let's be kind of honest. I, I still love theory, no, <laughs> no, but he has kind of got kind of great kid, don't get cocky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a couple other names. Uh, I think I was listening. I think I was also watching Hello Greedo. Um, a few others, but I mentioned kind of in passing that I wanted to do a. I'd love to do a Star Wars podcast, but I had no idea. And I think it was probably just within a few minutes, I got a Facebook message from a guy named Christopher Stolly, and he offered me a spot. Uh, at the time, he was doing, um, I think he was just doing Breaking the Fourth Wall, and he offered me a spot uh, to promote the show, and I told him, like, I have nothing to promote. I have nothing. <laughs> and I just had a little cell phone, and one thing led to another, and that led into War of the Stars, the first episode of War of the Stars, and I believe you are part of it, Brian. I think if I'm I not was, mistaken. Actually, I think I was on there. Yeah, I think you were. Yeah, and you just kind of stuck around for for a while. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we've gone through a few other networks. We were part of Romulus for a while, and yeah. uh, left to go on our own. Um, and we're currently with Geek News now. Uh, having a lot of fun there, and you know. I, one thing I've really appreciated with all of my co-hosts is there hasn't been a co-host that has left that has left on bad terms. And I think for a show that has been all, for a show that's been around that long, to say that is something I'm very proud of. That I tried my hardest not to burn any bridges, and if someone you know 
someone needs to, you know, is moving on that it's all amicable. There's no love loss. And every person that has been on this show, uh, no matter how long they've been on, is welcome back with open arms. I will say that right now. No love loss between anybody or anyone. Um, it's always been so much fun having everyone on. Um, we were going to try to get Will on. Unfortunately, Will had um, issues with uh, with work and was not able to be on here. We love having Darth Tuba on here. It's always fun to have him on. Um, and what about you, um, Bri Bri Brian? What are just, do you have any memories of uh, being a War of the Stars that you can yes. share? Or I remember. Okay. I, so I I remember you and I and uh, Chris did an episode one time, and I remember that I don't. I, and, and forgive me, I don't remember what the main topic was supposed to be in the episode. But all I remember is that me and Chris basically hijacked your entire episode. <laughs> I remember, and, yes, and just kind of went completely off off the rails and was just talking about everything else under the sun. And I, I remember that because I remember you titled it something along the lines of Brian and Chris just hijacked War of the Star or War of the Stars gets hijacked or something along those lines. I remember that because yeah, that was yeah. such a fun episode. And and Mark kept trying. He was like, well, anyway, and he would try to get us back on track. And we're like, no, screw you. And we would just keep talking about what we were talking about. I remember that. And, and then afterwards, I remember feeling so bad because I was just like, oh, no, man, that was his show. Because because we were so used to, like, just jumping into, like, breaking the fourth wall and yeah. just wherever it went, it went. And I remember that episode. I was still very new to doing the YouTube stuff and the podcasting and stuff like that. And so... I remember after that episode, I was like, oh, man, I feel so bad because we just completely, because especially when you named it, we hijacked your show. I was like, oh, no. I was like, did we really do that? <laughs> and so that was one of those learning moments, at least for me, as as a, as a personality on a podcast or on a show or anything like that. That was one of my learning moments um, that I used to better myself moving on realizing when to take a step back when it's somebody else's show you know what i mean and let yeah. them kind of take control of it so that was that was a huge learning moment for me but i remember that episode because i remember how much fun it was at the time <laughs> it was just so it was a blast yeah well and uh, that became kind of our thing of even the even the joke of here's our topic we'll probably be on that topic for about good luck staying on it two minutes <laughs> yeah, and then we'll be over here yeah. and then we'll be over here and then we'll be over here so, we so like the start. title of the episode was just the starting point of the episode, and where we're gonna end up, we don't know. Yeah, <laughs> we'll find out. Um, we've had a few good guests on. Um, yeah. I remember having, um, and I can't remember her name right now. Uh, the uh, the professor, the um, yeah, she did I the, wrote that. the book on Star Wars history. Uh, she she was on a couple times. Uh, we've been I've been trying to get her on. Um. We had uh, the guy who plays Nine Nub, Mike Quinn. Mike yes. Quinn. He's yes. been. On, he was on. He's awesome. Uh, he was. No, we we. I don't know. I don't think we had him on. We were going to. I think you had him. I, I know I had him on my show. I thought we. I thought we'd had him on yours too. I know uh, he did. We I know had, he was on my um, two-year anniversary show. Yeah, uh, we had um, a, again my my name he played he did several extras he played um in episode two he played um the the king of the night nemordians oh uh, yeah poggle yeah and he was also oh, the genosians yeah genosians poggle the lesser he was also um uh the, the Lord... body double what's that when when you're saying Paul the Lesser, are you talk are you talking about the, the voice actor? No, he was actually like in the costume or did like the the mocap. Um the the, the motion cap or something. But he did several yeah. others. He was also um he was also um Obi um uh, Obi Wan's body double. Nice. Because they have a similar build. It was that was really fun. And of course we talked to Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. One of the Vaders. Um that was a lot of fun too. That was the one that I missed. 
Uh, so my co-host had to interview that, which I was really upset about. But <laughs> um, yeah, what about you, Garrett? What are some of uh, the two years you've been been here? What are some memories well, that you've had of? It's been kind of interesting for me because, like, I actually started off as a guest. Um, yeah, you did. I got I got kind of connected. Um, we had a mutual connection through uh, Joe Cahill, mm -hmm. uh, who runs Steamhouse Entertainment. I'm not entirely sure how that came about. Just, I guess, a, a conflagration of of social circumstances, which is kind of nice. Um, and uh, in July of 2022, I was invited to be on as a guest. I uh, started talking about my books a little bit and talking about Star Wars. And I, you know, one of the things, one of my memories is getting a chance to kind of geek out because this is the first time that someone had been interested in my thoughts on Star Wars ever, you know, yeah. at least someone who I hadn't either married or, you know, played Star Wars RPG with in high school. Um, which now that I say that last part out loud, it tells you just how much, how old I've gotten. Um, but um, no, we, uh, it was great coming on here. And, um, and the fact that, you know, like it was kind of, it kind of turned into like a, um, an impromptu interview, like a couple of weeks after I was on, John issued me a, an invitation to come back as a, as a uh, guest host. And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll jump at that. Any chance yeah. to talk about star Wars. And it actually, to be honest, kind of saved me because uh, you know, I'm, I don't mean to come off as a bit of a downer, but um, in, in during 2021, 2022, I was going through the midst of a divorce and my ex-wife and I, we had both been huge Star Wars fans to the point where our wedding was Star Wars themed. Not like, not, you know, substantially, but there were, there were some nice little highlight elements as far as like hmm. things that we did. Yeah. Um, and uh like for example we did a, a unity lightsaber um instead of a candle or sand cause, well because nobody likes sand it's rough and coarse and gets all over the place i knew you were gonna say that <laughs> i love it but i had hit a point where i'm like i don't think i can ever watch star wars again because it was so intrinsically tied to that relationship and then John and Will invited me to come on as a guest and and then as a as a host and it it reinvigorated that love for all things Star Wars. So yeah. from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you very much. It's been it's been an honor to be a part of this for as long as you'll have me. Yeah, well, hopefully it will be here for a while. Um, for me, it's. I will admit there's been times where I've thought about quitting the show. I mean, there's been times when I look at, you know, I'm like, we're not getting any, we're not getting any, any plays. No one's listening to the show. Is anybody, you know, and inevitably I'll get someone that will say a message from somebody that will say, Oh, I really like your show. Your show is really cool. Or something like that. And it's just like, okay, I, I still have, I can still do this. Um, you know, it's just you you the, the the people out there, whether it's twenty people listening to an episode or fifty or whatever, every one of those every one of those people, um, you know, that's, that's why why I do this is yeah that maybe there'll be that one kid out there who listens to it and maybe it inspires them to do a podcast. Uh, it certainly inspired my daughter <laughs> to do a YouTube show. She's awesome, by the way. Well, thank Just you. Saying. Thank you. Yeah. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, um, the uh, thing that I've, I've appreciated about this is that, it's just been fun to have different perspectives, different points of view, um, being able to joke around. Um, and it's, it's, and it's cool to meet people who have been a part of this, like getting to connect with you, Brian, and, and just, yeah. and, and 
whenever we've had Will on the show since his his departure. Um, and it's just it's so it's fun. Yeah, I I, I like I I, I want to cultivate a a a a show where people aren't afraid to give their opinions and feel like they're whether that be positive or negative um you know i have the mindset of like what you like don't be a dick yeah sorry pardon my french but that's you know <laughs> you know it doesn't ma matter you know if you love all the sequels or you hate all the sequels you know you're still a star wars fan i i i i, I hate that and i've said this to garrett before I hate the term when someone says something such and such when it comes to a TV show is objectively bad because no everything yeah. is subjective, especially when it comes to taste. Like for the, you can find, you know, 50 people who hated Last Jedi and you can find 50 people who thought it was the greatest piece of cinema since, you know, and to say that either one is right or wrong, it's, it's an opinion. You know, it's that's what it boils, and we may people may differ in their opinion. And that's perfectly fine, as long as you're not hateful and putting the other person down because they have a different opinion of yours of a TV show, of a, or of a movie or a TV show. It's just it's just so, you know, that's why we end the show the way we do. With yep. it's not just my Star Wars, yours, it's ours. Because in the end, and did I ever tell you the story of how I actually the idea I, that came up with? I think I've said this before, before, but I don't know if I've told you guys. I don't think so. So this was around the time when Rise of Skywalker was just getting ready to come out, and they were doing uh, the trailers were at, where all the tra the first trailer had come out. And I'd watched the first trailer, and then I had was watching some reaction videos to see. And there was these two kids, and they're probably twelve or thirteen years old, young kids watching it, and they were just wide eyed, like like their eyes were like, "Oh my gosh, it's Ray! It's oh, it's Finn!" And then you see the scene where Lando shows up, and they're like, "Oh, who is that?" And everyone in the comments was blasting them. Like, how do you not know who Lando Calrissian is? And I made the comment, I was like, guys, instead of blasting these two kids who are new to Star Wars, why don't us older fans come along and say, come along young Catalan, let me tell you about the coolest man in the galaxy. Let me, you know, and I said, we become like us, a lot of times as older fans become gatekeepers. And when a new something new comes out, it's just like, well, even like a show like you know, Young Jedi, the young you know, the young the Young Jedi show or you, Resistance, those aren't meant for us. You know, it it was weird because like, you say that, and like it took like, me for for a while to get into a show like Resistance. Like I loved, I loved Rebels, I loved Clone Wars because they're part yeah. of that time period of of Star Wars lore and canon that I just absolutely yeah. enjoyed because that's what yeah. I grew up with, but. Looking at resistance, while like some of it was a little goofier than it needed to be, mm -hmm. uh, I do understand that it was it was targeting a younger demographic. Exactly, exactly. And yeah. the Clone Wars had been, and but I still found it enjoyable, and I watched through every single episode because it did a good job of filling in some gaps with. Yeah the sequel trilogy that I think was lacking because of, of just weaknesses in the storytelling from, from guys like JJ Abrams and Ryan Johnson, who either write out plot holes ad nauseum or, you know, are focusing more on spectacle than on story. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I love about this show. We can get our bed. Nobody's going to be like, Bruh! How dare you? You're not a real Star Wars fan. I love I love it when people lose their minds online. Like, look, I have my opinions about the sequels, right? Say that. I, I, On like, both sides. I, yeah. 
you know I have my opinions about the sequels. You know I do. And and right. Right. I you know, to me that's that's just that's my you know, that's my okay. experience. That's yeah, it's my opinion. Uh yeah. but I'm not gonna put somebody else down for enjoying it. If anything, I'm jealous of the people who enjoy it because right. I wish I liked it as much as you did. I wish I got some more yeah. enjoyment out of episode nine than what I did, you know? And right. so I'm I'm jealous of you. And so yeah. I'm not going to put you down for that. I'm glad you love it, you know? Um, and, and so yeah, I, I said, everybody and I likes the same different thing to things. People who, yeah, and I'd, and I'd say the same thing to people who love the sequel trilogy who say, well, you have to love it because it's Star Wars. You know, it's the, it's you the don't. same thing. You, you don't. Yeah. It's your opinion. You know, if the only thing I've I've said this time, I've said this before. If the only thing that you've ever watched in Star Wars is the original trilogy, and that's the only thing you'll you watch and that you watch that time and time again, you're a Star Wars fan. Yeah. If the only thing you've yeah. ever watched is the prequels, the, there's there's a book, and Mark, you know this. You're a Star there's Wars a fan, book, you know, but you love them. You're a Star Wars the, fan. The, there's a book that's out. It was like the third canon novel released. I loathe that novel i absolutely and mark you yeah. know you know i i despise that novel so much if i was out of toilet paper i wouldn't even use that book to 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 do what i needed to do i wouldn't even waste the paper to do it. like i hate that book and it's it's heir to the jedi i can't stand that novel but that doesn't mean that i don't like star wars you know yeah. like i i still read you just every don't care for book. that story I yeah. couldn't stand that story. That or Alphabet Squadron, which turns a lot of heads. When I get online, I'm like, I didn't like Alphabet Squadron. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with you? And I'm like, I just couldn't get into it. Wasn't my thing. You know, yes, I have not read any of those books. Oh my gosh, dude, you're missing out on some good stuff. There, well, there's some really good stuff in there. There's some bad stuff. Don't get me wrong. There's some really, really bad books, but there are some really great ones too. The I didn't I, most of the books that I've read that are Star Wars, I, I didn't read most of them. There's so much. So I didn't know where to start. And so mm -hmm. when I picked up a book, it was because it was it was either something that really stood out to me mm -hmm. uh, about it or because um, it just it hit me at a certain point. But like there was a a book. What book was it? it um, well, I mean, the first the first Star Wars book I ever really remember reading um, beyond like the kids picture book novelization. And that wasn't even really a novelization. It was just a picture book from the eighties of return of the Jedi. But the, the first real novel that I read was uh, dark force rising by Timothy Zahn. Oh, good book. Great book. Great good book. book. Yeah. And it, my grandfather, and the reason why I read it is because my grandfather knew that I was a big fan of star Wars and he gave me that copy. Mm -hmm. He didn't know that it was part of a trilogy. He just yeah. gave me the book. He thought yeah. I'd, I'd enjoy it. And, and, you know, this is back in the day when, you know, the only time you'd get to see Star Wars on TV is if you either A, had the VHS tapes and your parents gave you access to the entertainment center, or it somehow popped up on, on some random cable network. Yeah. 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 TBS usually. Fox. Or TNT now. Yeah. Yeah. TNT, TBS, yeah. one of the two, or, or randomly beyond, usually during the holiday, because I remember... A lot of times I'd be at my aunt, aunt's house on like a Thanksgiving or a Christmas and, oh, there's Return of the Jedi. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, see, like with the books now, like what, what I like about them is most of the time, most of the time, there's nothing really like galaxy shattering in the books where you can watch the movies and still get what's going on. But there are a couple of times and there's one book in particular. Um, you, I, I totally recommend this book, Garrett, it's called Bloodline. Um, there's, there's yeah, a, a legends it. book also called bloodlines, but this is a canon novel bloodline. It's a Leia novel. Um, oh, it's, yeah, like a, yeah, yeah. it's like a political thriller. There's a huge galaxy shattering moment in that book that is just huge. It's a huge spoiler. And it's like, Whoa. And <laughs> that is such an awesome book. And what there's, there's a really cool part, and, and and one of the things I appreciate, because Claudia Gray wrote that book, and like I said, I, I worship Claudia Gray. I, I love her as an author. But there's a point in there that she talks about. Um, she gets deep with some of her writing because Leia is talking to another senator. Uh, I think I don't think they're on Hosnian Prime. They might be on Chandrilla. Um, but she's talking to them. It's nighttime. The stars are out. And she points up, and she's pointing at a star, and she says, you see that star right there? That's Alderaan. And he's like, but I thought Alderaan was destroyed so many years ago. And he, she's like, it had, it was.
but we're so far away that you can still see the light of the planet. The light of the explosion hasn't gotten here yet. So the only way I actually, the, the close, the further I get from where Alderaan was, the closer I feel to home. And like some of the deepness they get into those books is so, it's just so good and, and, and just mind blowing about how they, they put everything together. So I definitely recommend that book. If you're going to read anything, to, I definitely recommend out. Bloodline. Um, but the one that stood out for me, I mean, the shadows of the empire was a big one, but, but one of the ones I really enjoyed was the, uh, the annotated scripts for the original trilogy. And they had the scripts for all three of the original films annotated with the, with the additional scenes that were put in for the special edition. So for those little changes, they did like, in the margins, they had a side-by-side -side comparison of how the scene was supposed to be versus how the scene is now. And that was that's really cool. cool. For me. That's um, cool. So yeah, having, having access to that was a lot of, was a lot of fun. I'll tell you one, one, one book that I really enjoyed, but first Star Wars book I read was um, Heir to the Empire. Um, that's kind of what made me a, a, basically that's what made me a star wars fan was like it took me from being like oh i you know i watch the movies movies are cool my cousin has some of the toys they're cool to i want to learn everything about this universe i want to know every what type of ship is that what okay okay that's like at one point i could tell you everything there was about the x-wing like i could tell you the type of hyperdrive engine it had the company that made it its history how was it originally started as an imperial fighter and then the uh, the income corporation uh, uh, got bought, you know, the uh, the um, the government, you know, basically government buyout, and a bunch of them fled and took the plans to the rebellion of the ship. And it's even its forerunner, the Z ninety five, which we finally got to see in Clone Wars. Yep, uh, which is so cool. I love the Z ninety five. Yep. Um, but another book that I really liked was Truce of Akora. That was, and I, for the love of me, I keep, every, you know, during the whole Legends, Legends timeline, and even into now, I'm like, bring back the Saruki. Bring, bring them back, please. They were such a cool, so cool. The whole sticking, sticking people, you know, almost bored. Like the way where they would like hook people up to their ships and it was like, oh, it was just so creepy. And, <laughs> yeah. The only book that I didn't really care for of those early ones is maybe it was because it was too much of, a, of the love story was courtship of Princess Leia. Yeah, like it was it was decent. Like I love you know bringing you know Corellia in, and well, like I still was hoping whenever whenever they uh, during the solo movie that we'd see Center Point Station. Like they would show the three planets and you'd see center point. That was kind of a yeah, you know, kind of a disappointment in that movie. A few disappointments in that movie. I mean, I enjoyed it, but <laughs> yeah. As I said before, is though it was the movie that didn't need to be made. Yeah, I don't disagree. I, I think I think this and tell tell me if you agree with this, Brian. I okay. think Solo could have worked better as a series. Absolutely. One like a adventure 100%. of the week hundred percent. An adventure of the week, and I even got the best way to end the series is the final episode is them in, them in the cantina, and they're talking about this new, and Chewie comes back, and he's like, so what, what do you mean he wants to go to Alderaan? They're like, okay, how much does he want? <laughs> how much have oh. you been drinking, Han? <laughs> yeah. Did you I, lose another bet to Lando? I think, and like I said, you could just, you could just that have made the an amazing adventure. Series. You don't have to have a like a like a whole story arc. You can just do adventure of the week. Yeah, a Han Solo adventure. A of serial. The week. Yeah, you can yeah, each, each, yeah. each, each in the vein of Young Indiana Jones. Yeah, what, which Harrison what, Ford what, cameoed in, I by the way. I know. Yeah, I loved that episode. That was so cool. But which is that yeah. canon to Indy? Is that actually canon? Um, you know what? What's that? The Young Indy, the the Chronicle. Hold on. Young Indiana Jones? There is a. Let me find it because there's a video that I was watching. Um, there, there's a channel called Secret Galaxy. They used to be called Toy Galaxy. 
and they had a video on young Indiana Jones and I will oh, send nice. you the link. Yeah, please do. Please do. Cause I remember that episode where he, where they had Harrison Ford cameo as older Indiana Jones in that, in that series. And I loved it. I thought that was a really nice little touch. That whole episode was great. They also did an episode speaking. It's Star Wars adjacent, but they did they did um, an episode seven months ago on the many nightmares of Captain EO, mm. and how it was the stuff of nightmares. Nice, yeah, nice. But yeah, no, the Han Solo movie would have totally worked better as a series, um, yeah. especially touching on the whole Crimson Dawn thing, mm-hmm. and and I think that would have, I think that would have been the better I, I, bet. I, I, but I that, think this. I think the same thing with Lando. Yeah. Lando needs and I I think it needs to be Billy D. Williams sitting in telling like a stories. bar telling the yes. stories and then it goes to the yes. flash flashback to to him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Well, hello. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello. What do we have here? Uh, we come have? listen to come <laughs> listen. I got a story to tell, you know. Yeah. Have a have a have a big old glass of some Colt forty five. Let's go, come on, you know, like like we could. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Like, love it. Oh, some some like sexy Twi'lek walks up to the bar and he's like, "Hey, I got a story for you. Why don't you sit down for a minute? You know, <laughs> like, you want to hear how I became the Baron of Cloud City on Bespin? <laughs> like, love it. Yeah." Oh man, that'd be so much fun. That would, be, would be so much fun. I'm gonna tell you about this this nerf herder I used to know named Han Solo. Rest Hello. in peace. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I did. I did like. I did, like, I did <laughs> like that. That was the one. The one kind of joke that I did notice that I kind of liked in Solo was the Han versus Han. Yeah, it's Han. It, yeah, that's okay. Like, it's like <laughs> Han is Han. Okay, Han. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh i love it yeah no i'm glad they touched on that the other thing i thought was a nice little touch too in solo was when l337 is like having the calculations go through her head and it's like the and it's the same sound the falcon makes in the classic yeah. trilogy when it's mm-hmm. trying to take I, I thought that was a really nice touch too yes yeah, yeah. But, and that's I, coming I, from somebody who was not a fan of l337 I was I, I, was, <laughs> like I couldn't stand her, but I I thought that was a cool touch. And the question is, do, you know, uh, what do L three three seven and uh, Indiana or Indiana Jones have in common? Oh, it's her. Oh, yeah. I know, right? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, she's worked with both Han Solos now. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I am not a fan of hers. <laughs> I'm not huge. I'm not a huge fan of her. Um, I liked her better in indie than I did in solo. She was um, insufferable in both. She she was. But if I had a gun to my head and I had to pick one to get rid of, it'd be L three three seven. That's fair. I which, which solo which uh, indie movie was she in? I she was in the last one, Dial of Destiny. Dial of yeah, Destiny. She was she was his goddaughter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, eh. Yeah. I just I couldn't. Really, I created a distraction. Oh my god! Just freaking powered down already like jesus when she got blown up i was like okay now this movie can get better here we go all right here we go yeah so hey well uh let's um i think this is a good place to wrap things up brian thank you again for joining us absolutely seven years um since you're the guest brian why don't you do your shameless plugs. Oh, my shameless plugs. All right. You guys can find me on my website first off, StarWarsCanon.net. That's a website I've put together. The entire Legends timeline is there in chronological order. The entire Ooh. Canon timeline is there in chronological order, all broken down by eras now. You remember Disney came out and said these are the new eras with the logos. It's all broken down by that. You can go find that there. Uh, you can find my show there, the Star Wars Canon Podcast. We're getting ready. We've been on a bit of a hiatus recently. Uh, I've been busy with this this next plug I'm going to be putting in. Um, But we're going to be firing my show back up. My co-host Yusuf Wally from across the pond in Cairo, Egypt joins me each week. And we uh, sit down and talk about some star Wars canon, review some stuff and, and and whatnot, take some mailbag questions right now. You guys can find me uh, at star Wars newsnet.com on our YouTube channel. Uh, Each Thursday night we go live. 
about nine o'clock central. Uh, we talk for about an hour about whatever the news is. It's usually me and a couple other guys from Star Wars Newsnet uh, interact with the viewers a whole lot on there. Uh, and also on Monday nights at seven central, I've been dropping a show uh, with Star Wars Newsnet with one of our co-hosts from there, Tyler Bradshaw. We do the Star Wars timeline show. Where, so we started at the very beginning of the timeline uh, with Canon with a short story called The Queen's Bloom. It was in Tales of Light and Life. It's a High Republic story. And we are working our way through the entire timeline, one short story, one comic issue, one TV episode, one game, one movie, one book at a time. And so we are working our way through. We're almost, we like, we next week we're finally going to be out of the very first year recorded in Star Wars history as of now, 382 BBY. We're finally getting out of that year because all of Phase 2 happened during that year. It's ridiculous. It was a busy year for Star Wars. Uh, and we're finally getting into Phase 1. So definitely go over and check that out. Uh, and we've got some other shows in the pipeline also. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything about them just yet. Um, they're not my babies. It wasn't my idea. Somebody else has got a really cool idea for some shows. Um, and so those are be coming down the pipeline. So go over there, check that out, subscribe, tune in and uh, hang out with us talking some Star Wars. Definitely. Uh, Garrett, what about you? Well, you guys can find me on uh, Instagram and X at GKJ underscore publishing, where I uh, talk about my books, The Archives of the Sink Ran, although I haven't been talking about those a whole lot lately. Uh, I also have been talking hugely about uh, two other projects that I work on. First is my YouTube channel. Uh, you can find me at youtube.com slash C slash GKJ publishing, or just do a search for GKJ publishing. I do a show called The Right Way where we talk book recommendations, author interviews, and creative writing tips. Uh, speaking of episodes, I on The Right Way, I just wrapped up my Author Awareness April Marathon each week, a new interviewee um, that just wrapped up this last Saturday. And in a week and a half on the 11th, so the Saturday before Mother's Day, Mr. John Mark Tolley is actually going to be on my show as a guest host providing his top 10 book wrecks <coughs> excuse me i had some sand fly into my throat um it's course it gets, it gets everywhere it gets everywhere yeah yeah I knew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that will never get old for me now thank you brian <laughs> um <laughs> the uh the other the other project i've been working on vigorously for the last three months uh, is a podcast that I do separate from War of the Stars called Star uh, called uh, Storytellers, and season five just wrapped up today. Well, this is uh, April thirtieth, um, as I, I'm I'm recording this, and uh, so fifteen episodes for season five, all talking about dealing with divorce and the story that I have of going through that process. So if you heard my my comments from earlier. Um, Yep, that, there we go. Uh, it was fun. Um, it, it was very cathartic for me to go through that. And the, the, the podcast, not the actual divorce part, because that sucks. Um, I might wish that on Palpatine, not, not oh, anybody else. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's, that's where you guys can find me. Yeah. Uh, obviously here, if you want to get a hold of us here, the best way to do that is through our email that is War of the Stars one at gmail.com. There's also, ironically enough, our handle on X at War of the Stars. Uh, all, the, all other social media, you can just search for War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. Check out our Facebook group, Instagram, all that stuff. Um, where else? I'm trying to remember. YouTube. Oh, YouTube, yes. At War of the Stars 9510, or just search for War of the Stars. Uh, most of what you can find on there right now is my other show. Quick plug for Star Wars Through the Eyes of a Child. Myself and my daughter Lily are going through the Star Wars, the Clone Wars in chronological order. Um, because if you know anything about how they did, how they did the Clone Wars, you can't watch it in just the order that it was that it was played in. It right. jumps all over the place. At least until uh, you get midway through season three. Right, yeah, I think yeah. season two or season three. It balances it kind of, out pretty good. Yeah, it balances out. Uh, but we're having a lot of fun doing that. Um, and uh, oh, of course, uh, don't forget we are a part of Geek News Now. Uh, check out the Geek News Now official 
you yeah, you have to put in that official, otherwise you'll get something else. Uh, check out all the shows. Uh, re- just yesterday, I was part of MCU Mondays. Um, they're talking uh, X-Men 97, which if you are an X-Men fan and you're not watching X-Men 97... You probably should be. What What are you doing with your life? Oh, dude, it's been emotional, man. Oh, oh, don't, don't, yeah, <laughs> don't, just don't even get me started, you know. Um, <laughs> just, and, and now anytime I hear the word remember it, I'm just like, no, damn. Uh, <laughs> all the feels, anyway. thanks. Thanks, John. All the feels, yes. Uh, also, check them out on Spotify. Um, uh, not just our show, but all the different shows that are on there. Uh, if you want to support the show, a couple ways you can do that. Kofi.com slash War the Stars. Uh, you can donate there. It's really easy. Um, we found this a lot easier than pay- to do than Patreon. Um, it's just like getting us a cup of coffee. Uh, or you can go to our Spreadshirt shop. Spread- spreadshirt shop spreadshirt.com forward slash shop forward slash four of the stars. Um, and you can get cool merch like this um, or a coffee mug or a hats or whatever. Uh, so that is that. Uh, I believe that's all the plugs we got. All yeah, our stuff. that's pretty much it at this point. All right. Uh, and once again, thank Brian for joining us today a lot of fun um yeah thank you to all the fans out there who have watched the show we or listened to it or whatever however you have absorbed our uh star wars nerdiness uh we really appreciate it and once again as we always say this is not just my star wars this is not just your star wars this is our star wars until next time May the force be with you. Never tell me the odds. <laughs>